All right, guys. Hey, I'm going to walk you through this animation on uh, fat digestion, the enzymes that are uh, involved in it. It gets kind of uh, complex, and, and I'm going to try to shed a little light on it. It may or may not help. Uh, but again, take it for what it's worth. Uh, I'll try to, you know, help you out with some of the terminology. So uh, let's see how this goes. Lipid digestion occurs primarily in the small intestine, though a small amount of lipids are broken down in the stomach. Now, time out. It says stomach, but notice it also does mention the mouth as well. It's going to get into what occurs in the mouth as far as lipid digestion uh, in just a second. Special enzymes called lipases break down triglycerides, the most abundant lipids in the diet, and phospholipids. Can you tell me how it got the name lipases? Uh, again, we talked about how enzymes are oftentimes named. Uh, if you see that ending ASE, uh, in this context of biology and in biochemistry, we're dealing with an enzyme. And the prefix a lot of time comes from uh, what they act upon, what they break down or put together, depending on what kind of enzyme it is. Lingual lipase, secreted by glands in the tongue, and gastric lipase, secreted by gastric chief cells, hydrolyze a very small amount of triglycerides into fatty acids and monoglycerides. Okay. Uh, the duodenum, or duodenum, depending on who, who you talk to or how they say it, uh, is this very first section of the small intestine coming right off the, uh, the stomach. Now, this is where uh, a lot of roads uh, connect as far as your, your liver and your uh, pancreas and your gallbladder. Uh, so a lot of things happen in this first part of the, of the small intestine called the duodenum, or duodenum. Uh, so pay attention to this part. As chyme enters the duodenum from the stomach, it is met by bile salts and pancreatic juice. Bile salts cling to the mono, di, and triglycerides of fat globules. This causes the fat globules to break up into triglyceride emulsion droplets. Pancreatic juice contains large amounts of pancreatic lipase the principal triglyceride digesting enzyme. Pancreatic lipase molecules attach to triglyceride molecules of the emulsion droplets. Each triglyceride molecule is catalyzed and broken into one monoglyceride and two fatty acids. Okay, so recapping a little bit. The chyme they mentioned, that C-H-Y-M-E term, is just, well, basically pre-poop if you want to look at it that way. It's the stuff that comes out of the stomach. Sometimes when it's in the stomach, it's called chyme as well. When it gets into this first part of the small intestine, the pancreas starts uh, responding and dumping in this, its pancreatic juices, and one of them is going to have these bile salts in it uh, coming from the liver, which is stored in the gallbladder, and they are necessary because they help uh, fats mix with the watery environment inside your intestines and will come into play later on. So yeah, uh, these these enzymes and these uh, these pancreatic juices are important. And then once they're uh, in there, the lipases, the pancreatic lipase, which they said was the chief uh, digester of lipids, uh, comes into play and starts chopping these things up into free fatty acids. You can see the little little doodads here. And these little T's, those aren't T's, those are monoglycerides because it's got one fatty acid attached to that glycerol molecule. Gotta click on an end product, sorry. The adequate absorption of lipids into epithelial cells of villi requires bile salts. All right, I'm going to click on this brush border here, which is this right here. They're, these cells are called uh, ciliated columnar cells, uh, and again, it increases surface area to maximize absorption. This is called the brush border. As you can see, it kind of looks like a brush. Uh, I'm going to click on that. It's going to get into some of the more specifics of uh, fat digestion, and it's going to 
talk about micelles or micelles, however you want to say it, and chylomicrons and, and exocytosis and all that stuff. So pay attention to this as we get into it. Bile salts form tiny spheres called micelles, which work to ferry fatty acids and monoglycerides to the apical surface of the epithelial cells. Okay, time out. Uh, without bile salts, these fatty acids and cholesterols and phospholipids wouldn't be able to be uh, transported in, within the water environment. Uh, the micelles or the bile salts have a hydrophobic side to them, which will always face in and attach to these uh, lipids, and it has a hydrophilic or water-loving uh, portion to them that will always stick out. All right, so they have a, the outward facing. If you notice this little fossil, but there's that phosphate head that has a polar region as well facing out. So it basically allows all the, it gathers up all the all the fats, all the uh, cholesterol, and at, like I said, acts like a ferry. It transports it from the the liquid uh, chyme over to the apical surface or the very outer surface of the uh, cell membrane for transport within the cells and then eventually into your your vessels. The fatty acids, monoglycerides, and some phospholipids and cholesterol molecules diffuse freely into epithelial cells. Time out. Remember, all your cell membranes are composed of these phospholipids. If it's fat soluble and small enough, it should be able to just passively diffuse right across the membrane. That means where it'll flow from where there's a lot of them and just gradually, due to uh, the natural energy of it, it'll just kind of slip right through in between those phospholipids uh, and into the cell. It doesn't need a protein channel to get it across because it is nonpolar, so it can slip right through. If it has a charge, it's got to have a protein uh, to allow it to get through either f through facilitated diffusion or through active transport. These things don't have a charge, so they can just slip right through. Meanwhile, my cells diffuse back into the chyme, where they continue their ferrying action. Within the epithelial cells, many monoglycerides are further hydrolyzed by lipase. The result is glycerol and fatty acids. The broken down and absorbed end products then recombine to form triglycerides, which aggregate with phospholipids and cholesterol. So time out. Yeah, they broke them down just to get them inside the cells and then reconnect them back into the triglycerides. Remember, they were uh, monoglycerides and free-floating fatty acids uh, when they came across. But once they get across, they reform them back into triglycerides, group them all together with the other uh, nonpolar uh, things that are coming into the body, and then uh, are transported like that. The resulting mass, called a chylomicron, becomes coated with proteins There's that Golgi apparatus. It's going to actually package up, package them up into a phospholipid uh, vesicle, and be used to be to be released from the cell through exocytosis. And leaves the epithelial cell via exocytosis. Because of their bulk, chylomicrons do not enter blood capillaries directly. So here's a unique unique thing about fats. Pay attention to this part. Instead, they enter lacteals travel through lymphatic vessels and enter the bloodstream at the left subclavian vein. So again, lacteals, which you'll see from some of the other animations if you've watched them, are just the very, very small uh, capillary versions of uh, your lymphatic system, which we'll talk about later on when we get into immunity, but your lymphatic system is absolutely important for transporting fats, uh, like it says, to this left subclavian vein or the thoracic duct where it can be dumped into your blood system and then from there it can be sent to the heart, pumped through and out to the rest of your body and deposited wherever your body needs it. Chylomicrons do not remain in the bloodstream long. They are broken down by lipoprotein lipase. Oh, wow. Time out for a second. I'm, hang on. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that, guys. The custodian came in and during the middle of that. But let's finish this thing up. Capillary endothelial cells in the liver and adipose tissue. All right, that wraps it up. That's fat digestion. Uh, it does get in a little more specific than some of the other resources. 
Uh, but again, sum it all up, you have a little bit of lingual life pace. You then uh, once that thing gets into your small intestine, especially the first part called the duodenum or duodenum, uh, that's where the pancreatic juices come in. It creates uh, little fat globules where the pancreatic juices and the bile salts start mixing. And then on an even smaller level, and then, then your lipases come in, start breaking them down into mono and, and uh, glycerides and into free fatty acids. And then that's whenever the, uh, the micelles or, or missiles start forming. Uh, which basically, they just attach to all the phospholipids and the fats and the, and the cholesterol, and they create a little, a little droplet that's ferried over to the cell membrane surface to, so it can passively diffuse into the, into the cell. They put everything back together as a triglyceride, uh, package it up into a little protein uh, and phospholipid bundle called a uh, chylomicron, and then it's sent into the lymphatic system and enters the bloodstream under the left, into the left subclavian, uh, where then the chylomicrons, as I mentioned, are broken down and the fats can be deposited. I uh, hope this helped you guys.